blood diamonds it's a deadly business and this movie does not hold back it's brutal so strap yourself in in this video i will summarize and explain the story so you can be up to date on this incredible movie this is blood diamond the movie opens with jaiman hansu's character solomon vandy taking his child to school he sees a group of guerrilla fighters known as the ruf going to attack his village he runs back home to protect his family they are seen escaping, but Solomon is captured. One of the commanders sizes Solomon up and decides he's fit to work in their diamond mines. He sends him off. We learn of the brutality involved in the diamond trade as we briefly see the G8 summit discussing ways to help the problem. Leo's character, Danny Archer, is introduced, seen selling weapons to a Commander Zero of the RUF. He exchanges the weapons for diamonds. Danny gets caught trying to smuggle the diamonds out of the country and is taken to jail. While Salomon is in the mines, he is seen finding a massive pink diamond. He already saw someone get shot for trying to steal a diamond, but this one is so large, he decides it's worth the risk to try and hide it. He clenches it between his feet and says he needs to use the bathroom. He goes to hide it, but is seen by one of the commanders. Just then, however, government forces invade and start attacking. The commander is hit, and Solomon runs. He is able to quickly dig a hole and hide the diamond, but he is then taken by the government forces. He is imprisoned in the same jail as Danny. The commander is heard yelling about the diamond he saw Solomon try to hide. He says it's the biggest ever and demands to know where he hid it. Solomon calls him a liar. He tells him he already took everything from him and there is no diamond here. We see Danny extremely interested. As soon as Danny gets out of jail, he starts scheming on how he can get the giant pink diamond that he heard about. He pays to get Solomon out of jail, but he does not go and meet with him right away. Danny meets Jennifer Connelly's character, Maddie Bowen, a journalist interested in exposing blood diamonds. She makes repeated attempts to get information from Danny, but he is very standoffish. Solomon continues to look for his family. We see his son, Dia, being captured by the RUF. They are seen turning the captured boys into soldiers, including Dia. They make them do horrific acts and essentially they are brainwashing them. Danny confronts Solomon about the diamond. While Danny tries to get Solomon to come with him, RUF attacks the city. Danny gives Solomon an ultimatum. He says, stay here and die or help him find the diamond and they split it 50-50. Danny tells him he can also help him get his family back. Solomon agrees to help him under those terms. They escape the city and head toward the location of the diamond. They meet up with Maddie. Danny believes that she can help them. Danny says he's willing to give her a story about the people that buy the diamonds he smuggles if she helps him find Solomon's family. Of course, Solomon will help Danny if they are able to find his family, so Danny is ultimately doing this for himself. We learn Danny wants the diamond so that he can move away from Africa and start over. He was born and raised there and wants to get away from the violence and troubled lifestyle. Solomon finds his family, but learns Dia has been captured. His family is being held because many are believed to be rebels and the government can't let them out until they know for sure. They continue to search for the diamond and Solomon's son, Dia. Danny gives Maddie some details about the illegal diamond trade, and she helps them pose as journalists to get where they are going. While on their way, they are attacked by rebels. Most of the journalists are killed, but Maddie, Solomon, and Danny are able to escape. They make their way through the jungle. They end up at a camp for kids who were taken by RUF but are now being rehabilitated. The leader of the camp helps them get out of the area, which is being controlled by RUF. On their way, the leader of the camp is shot by an RUF child soldier. They, however, are able to save him. When they get to the military base, we see Danny's former colonel asking him to get back in the fight. Danny was brought in by this man at a young age, and he represents a father figure toward him. He tells Danny to get his gear, and they will get the diamond together but Danny does not plan to join him. He and Solomon go for the diamond alone. On their way, Solomon thinks he sees his son. He shouts for him. 
They are shot at and almost get killed, but once again are able to escape. Danny threatens Solomon. He says if he ever risks his life like that again, he will kill him. Danny and Solomon fight over their next move. Solomon says he won't go any further until he finds his son. Danny starts to sympathize with him, but also knows he has no choice. He tells Solomon he will help him. They continue to move forward toward the camp where the diamond is at. When they get there, Danny calls his colonel and gives him coordinates for an airstrike. He plans to use the airstrike as a diversion to grab the diamond for himself. But Solomon wants to find his son, so he goes down to the camp at night to see if his son is there. Solomon finds his son. He tries to get his attention, but Dia says he doesn't know him and calls him the enemy. He calls him a traitor. RUF takes Solomon prisoner, and we see the commander who imprisoned him earlier face him down. He remembers Solomon and wants to know where the diamond is. He uses Solomon's family to threaten him. He says he will find and kill the rest of them just like he found Dia. But just then, the airstrike comes in. Solomon gets away and is able to kill the commander. Danny comes in to try and help Solomon. He sees Dia and goes after him instead. When the military moves in, the colonel says he wants the diamond for himself. Danny tries to cut a deal with the colonel even though he already promised it to Solomon. The colonel tells Danny he's not really in a position to negotiate, but ends up with an uneven, unfair deal where the colonel gets a majority of the payout. Danny tells Solomon the colonel will shoot them both in the head if they don't give up the diamond, but Solomon says he does not trust the colonel. Danny goes to give up Solomon's son to the colonel. The colonel threatens Solomon with Dia. Solomon has no choice. He agrees to give up the diamond. While searching for it, Danny hints to Solomon. They both make a move and they take out the soldiers. Danny kills his father figure, the colonel. Solomon continues to quickly dig as they know more soldiers will be there any minute. Danny realizes he is shot. Solomon finds the stone, but Dia grabs a gun and points it at Danny. Solomon is able to emotionally talk him down. He reminds him who he really is. The other soldiers show up and they run. Danny calls his pilot and the pilot tells him to get rid of Solomon. We see Danny take the stone. Danny is having trouble with his wound. Solomon helps him up the hill to the airstrip. They stop as Danny is realizing that he is not going to make it. He takes out the stone to admire it and then tells Solomon to take it. He gives him his gun and says don't trust the pilot. You point the gun at him if he tries anything and you get yourself and your son home. Danny stays behind and helps fight off the pursuing soldiers as Solomon runs to the plane. He calls Maddie and tells her to help Solomon. He tells her they found his son and the diamond, but they are going to need her help. He tells her he's dying and he can't do it himself. He dies there on the hillside. Solomon goes to meet with the diamond buyer while Maddie starts creating her story. The buyers bring Solomon's family back as we see him give up the diamond. Maddie is there to take evidence and now she has the evidence she needs to expose the diamond trade. She writes her story and in the final scene we see Solomon given an opportunity to tell the world the truth. The end.